he power spanks these kids. He grabs them, puts it over his lap, and goes, wham, 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 wham. wham. <laughs> Welcome back to the 177th episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, the show where we watch terrible movies and sometimes incredible movies <laughs> and tell you if you should too. <laughs> Kyle, I'm going to bat in this episode. This is not the first time I've picked a film that just turns out to be good, I, but also kind of hits all of our yes. regular notes. We'll get into it. This movie is, it, it, it's, I've, we've had other one, well, at least once before where I watched it, I was like, I think this is just too good and there's not enough to talk about. This mm. one's an incredibly good movie that also has enough <laughs> shit to talk about. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, sometimes we do apparently watch good movies. Uh, I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shelley. joined, as always, by the other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Uh, Kyle, uh, this is your pick, your episode. Yes. You found uh, this film. This is actually a patron suggestion. Was it a patron suggestion? Mm-hmm. I was wondering where you found this. Uh, I did some looking. This is directed, uh, and we'll say what it is in just a second. This is directed by Mark Lester. Who is known for Commando? Yeah, I, and I can Fire definitely feel Starter. that. Okay, the so Firestarter was probably interesting. the two movies that he's most known for. He directed. Both I can those. understand Commando, but then you yeah. throw Firestarter. I'm like, that's a very little, interesting. It's, it's okay. That's a curveball yes. in comparison to the other two. He also there's a prequel, not a prequel, but there's a movie that in this series before this called Class of 1984. That I, I didn't look at uh, anything. Like it's some, in the same series. I don't think any of the characters are the same, but it's like the same like some premise, dystopian maybe. dystopian bureaucracy. <laughs> I think. I don't know. Is this the future? Take a look at my face. I've been locked in the future. I didn't look at what it was, but there's because there's a class of 1984, and then there's also a class of 1999, The Substitute, which is a sequel to this. Oh, boy. That I don't know if it also carries over any of the characters or any. I have no idea. Uh, I just know that there are at least three films roughly in this series. I don't know how related they are. But anyways, this film is Class of 1999. Battle droids, Battle droids. To graduate is to survive. And I I said it (laughs) already, but Kyle, the experience of watching this film was fascinating for me because it starts off, I'm like, oh yeah, this seems like it's going to be a terrible movie. Mm. It opens up, it's got these weird psychedelic ass like opening credits and I thought I was slipping into a K-hole. I didn't know what was happening. Uh, And then we get like the opening monologue, like prologue or whatever, Mm. that's like, it's the year 1997. Gangs are taking over schools. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) this is absolutely going to be terrible. The year is 1999. The gang controlled areas have become known as Free fire zones. Uh, Because they have these, and it reminds, the setup is very similar to, what was that movie called? Um, Something Uh, Zone or? uh, Fire, is it Firepower with uh, Gary Daniels? Yes, uh, where they go into the like, the no-go zones or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So they have these no-go zones in these cities. Yeah. But then they also have like, gangs of kids. Yes. Well, that's why they're, they're, they're chaos or anarchy zones is because the gangs run everything. It's like Mad Max. In addition to that, these (laughs) schools also have like, their own private security or like, they're, they're defended by the government. Yeah. Okay. The the, the Department of Educational (laughs) Defense. Defense. It's so good. The Department of Educational Defense has been formed to reopen the schools. Yeah. I do love how they're like there's these these zones where there is yeah. no law. Free fire zones it's, is what they're called. It's, yeah. it's anarchy. There yeah. is no law. But also we need to protect the children's education. And you gotta go to school. <laughs> I could not get over. I'm like, why are these kids going to school, Kyle? They're literally like murdering everybody, and they're like their whole lives is just like uh, they're like running like a gang operation, and like literally like they are the form of an imp- in de facto form of government in these zones. But they all still go to high. school school and it's like, and that's the stupid shit that made that guy hits our high notes for yeah. what we do and, and that is like the one i will say that's like the uh, one thing in this movie that really you have to just like okay sure i guess they're still going to high school for some reason <laughs> if you can buy that the rest of the movie is a masterpiece oh my in God. my opinion um but i love after the opening uh, prologue we jump in and the first shot of this movie they knew what the money shot was we open on the back of the villain's head and 
and see his glorious ice white oh, yes. mullet. <laughs> yes, with that little freaky red tail. Little at the red end. tail, yes. <laughs> and he turns around and the guy this villain is incredible. It's so good, yeah. I don't remember his name. Um uh, I don't know if they say it very often. <sighs> I can't remember either. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, I just called him Ice Mullet the whole time because yeah, he's yeah. got, he also, he turns, so he turns around and reveals he has these white eyes because he has he's like deep. white contact lenses. <laughs> this guy is 100% like the, uh, not the CEO, but like the corrupt uh, board member from RoboCop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he and is. Yeah. It's basically what this is. Yeah. Because he's the CEO of this tech company that <laughs> builds these assassin it's robots. RoboCop meets firepower. That's. Yes. Effectively, what this film uh, is. meets Mad Max meets the Warriors. Yes, <laughs> which is again amazing. It's incredible. Ugh. The villain. I'm just trying to remember the find the villain. Oh, I think it's it's Doctor Bob Forrest. And uh, yes, yes, does it. The actor is Stacy Keach, who I had seen in something. Uh, oh, I think he's probably most known. He's Mike Hammer, uh, Private Eye. It looked like a TV show from like back in the day. Dude, that's a baller name for a show. Hammer P.I.? Uh, it was Mike Hammer, Private Eye. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, he was also in Escape from L.A. Uh, of course. He was in The Bourne Legacy. He was in Up in Smoke. Uh, he's been in episodes of Blue Bloods, The Blacklist, <laughs> NCIS New Orleans. <laughs> every cop thing yes, ever. Yes, every cop thing ever, apparently. Uh, yeah, anyways, I lo- he was in a couple episodes of Ray Donovan. So that's interesting. Anyways, yeah, he's fantastic as this villain. He's ridiculous, uh, and I love his his insane hair, and the movie does too, and they know. I know that when you asked Megatech to help you with your problem, it wasn't an easy decision. Uh, (laughs) Because that's the first thing we see. Uh, So he's explaining, he's at this board meeting. Mm. Uh, He runs, he's the president and, like, head researcher of whatever tech it's the company's called like Mil- it's not Militech, but it's something like yeah. that, or it's some tech company that has created these new artificial teachers to bring order back to what? the classroom. Kyle, this is what ha- this is what happens. This is this is what they worried. You know, they told us about uh, Brian about AI taking over. That, you're not wrong, dude. <laughs> Murderous AI taking over. I love he he brings them in, and it's these three people. It's an old dude who's the history teacher. Mm. It is Pam Greer. <laughs> Who is the science or like chemistry yeah, teacher? That was the only name I recognized yes. out of this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, it's Pam Greer. And then it's uh, uh, the other guy's, the character's name is Bryles. I don't remember mm. what the actor's name is, uh, who is the like gym the, teacher, yeah. basically. Dude, gym teacher's a robot. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, and he, but he brings them in and he's like, These artificially created tactical education units. Have been thoroughly programmed. These are artificially created tactical education units. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm into this. And I love the, the, so Malcolm McDowell is Yeah, there. of course. Because it's, it's, it's a cheap film well yes. after Clockwork Orange and yeah. he needs a paycheck. You say well so. after. It's, I mean, it is, yeah, it's after. But Malcolm McDowell still, Malcolm McDowell still looks fairly young yes. in this. It's 1990 is when this came out. So it's, again, it is after. But uh, he's playing the, the principal of this main high school, Kennedy High School. Yes, there. Okay, why is it? Why is a British guy a principal at a freaking at Seattle a, high school? Seattle high school. He came over and yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? Doesn't he, matter. He just, you know, he just loves education. That yeah, much. absolutely. He wanted to come over to the to, to Seattle to to spread his educational. <laughs> anyway, I have no idea, but he is the president of this fucking high or president. <laughs> That's my principal. Say the president of the high school. He's the principal <laughs> of this high school. I resigned today as president of the bank. Uh, and he, uh, he's like talking to them about the, the robots. He's like, how do you, are these are actually like robots? They're not people. And the, one of them goes, yep. And goes and rips its mouth. Yes. I actually, it's, sorry. It says 1 million megabytes and then rips its mouth open, revealing a God. giant, uh, fucking terrifying yeah, some robot Some of the skeleton. stop motion is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's pretty the, great. Dude, this 1 million megabytes. Special effects in this are they there's times where it looks cheesy a little bit, but they went so hard mm. and went and so in this all is, in. This is like the the full Robocop oh, yes. type stuff. And they, they I think they had to have gotten the people. Like, like something, some of the man. They have people. full mechs. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. full fully animatronic like 
people at the end of this movie that again don't look incredible no. but look pretty good yeah. and look and work great for the, the and there movie. was something that worked back then and yeah. they capture it so. yeah yeah no it i i was really impressed with the with the animatronics and special effects in this movie even though a few times you're like oh my god it's kind of ridiculous I, there, I don't know what it is but there's just something about like the old practical effects back then that just kind of feels like it holds up today yeah yeah, I mean, well, part of it is they're just like, they just slap goo, goo on everything. Like, especially at the end of this movie, everything just oozing green goo yeah. and like and blood and guts and just like yeah, that slap apparently more has to be refrigerated. It. Yeah, <laughs> slap more goo on it. Uh, but then we're introduced to Cody Culp, and when he was first introduced, I thought they said Cody Co, and I was like, isn't that like a YouTuber? It is, but it's okay. not Cody Co. It's Cody Culp. <laughs> Uh, and he is getting out of prison. He was yes. in prison for, we don't really find out exactly what he was in prison for. Not even for, like but. juvie, just like legit prison. Yes, they apparently just throw everybody in prison. Uh, and he is in high school, and he gets out, though, for good behavior or whatever. He's on probation, and he meets up with his brothers. He has two brothers, mm. Angel and something. I think, I think this actor's name is like Bradley Gregg or something like That's that. That's the main act, the main, yes, the yeah, main yeah, character, uh, Cody. I don't know why. He just reminds me a little bit of Norman Reedus. Just a, a little, little bit, bit, yeah. I could see that. He reminded me at first a little bit of one of the Corys, I think, at some point. Anyways, <laughs> uh, he's actually really good. I mm-hmm. actually, oh, again, yeah. Yeah. all the performances the, 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 are really good. Yeah, the lead, the lead two, the the top, uh, was it, uh, God damn, what's her name? But uh, Tracy Lynn, isn't that the actress? Her and him. You mean like the love interest? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, I, yeah, like, I don't know. The they, character's name's Christine. They're the best actors in this film, yeah. usually. Oh, I thought they were, I thought, but that being said, I thought pretty much everybody was mm-hmm. doing pretty good. I mean, the, the, the they're, worst they're, performances are like... Like the gang members, some of the gang some members. Of the, yeah, some of the yeah. random gang members and stuff are like kind of over the top and cheesy, but I thought it all worked in context of the film. So, if you ain't with us, you're against us. So that means we got to kill you. Hmm. Um, but he's with his two brothers who are... Uh, Sonny and Angel. Sonny and Angel, and he's uh, Sonny is older, Angel's younger, and Sonny's like, "Hey, we got some drugs. You want to do drugs?" And Cody is trying to straighten out his life. You know, he's trying to get on the straight and narrow a little bit. Yeah, I'm on the straight edge, man. <laughs> yeah. So he doesn't want to do the whatever the little vials of snorting drugs. Oh, oh you mean the uh, the uh, fuses that yeah. they got the little, little little breaker fuses? Yes. Yeah, but I, I have to talk about. I love the future fashion in this movie. Like out the outfits that Cody and his brothers yeah. are wearing are just insane in the best way possible. They just, they, he's got a little leather coat that comes down to like here, and then he's got like studded belts everywhere. Everybody and, in this looks like they either fell out of a Sid Vicious album yeah. or they're going to like a Raiders game. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's incredible. And I love so they're driving home and he's like and they're they're mad at him, particularly, particularly Sonny's mad at him that because he, he doesn't want to get high with him or whatever. <laughs> and then Cody drives them We're through. High. <laughs> You want to get high? Cody drives them through Razorheads territory, (laughs) and they are not Razorheads. They are Blackhearts. So they are now the rival. They're on the rival gang territory, and I love the rival gang. Oh, my God. Has an armored station wagon. What? (laughs) It's amazing. It is a fucking station wagon. Fully decked out in armor with like a giant turret on the back, with like a chariot <laughs> yeah. that like people climb in and out of. It's incredible. I love it so much. Uh, but they're giving Ugh. him shit, and then there's kind of a short chase as they like chase him down uh, for being on his turf and like talking shit or whatever. Uh, and so far, I was like, this is wonderfully directed and edited. And spoilers, it just continues to be. This movie is very good. Yeah. Um, but then, so they get home, and the next day they're going to school. And this is, we get, the teachers are showing up, and we we get, throughout the movie, some first-person shots, like, from the Oh, yeah, where they have all the information. Yeah, and like the classic like Terminator, Terminator, like, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. exactly. Um, but what we see here, one of the things, and this is what goes back to what we are saying, it says, like, the stats of the school as they're walking up, and it says, uh, the Kennedy High School, 3,000-some, like, 100-something kids... Uh, 2,200 gang members, which means that two thirds of the school are gang. Why are they going to school? It's the whole school yeah. as gang members, and they just keep going to be- school for some reason. They may be gang members, Brian. They may be shooting each other, you know, doing drugs, literally gang warfare where they're sh- killing each other in the streets. Yeah. But they respect their parents enough to go to school but and they get a don't. better education. But they don't, because we see they <laughs> no. just go there and they just like fuck around. None yeah. of them are like actually. It's so dumb. Like, why? Why are you? <laughs> In there, I think the only explanation, and and especially for Cody, he is required, or else he will get thrown back in yes, prison. That would make sense. I'm lying low for a while. If I get slammed for ganging, I'll be doing real hard time. 
They say, for, but I, but I assume not every single student there has been in, arrested or whatever, no. and is being thrown. I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, they're like, if you don't go back to school, you break your parole, and we'll throw you back in jail. So he, that's why he has to be there. But I don't get why everybody else is there. Um, Anyway, so then, then the, the, we're, we have the, the, the auto, the Terminator teachers are taking over their classes. Uh, and the first one we see is Pam Greer uh, taking over the chemistry class, and some kids start talking shit, and she just beats the shit <laughs> yeah. out of them, like throws one across the room and sm- smashes another one's they, foot. Uh, they keep getting this, like, uh, they, they can assess, like, an altercation. Yes. And then it gives them options to like, kind of deal with it. Educate, discipline, whatever, yeah. Corporal punishment. Corporal punishment, which is the next one. So after she beats the shit out of those guys, we then are intro- oh, also in that class, we're introduced to Christine, who is, mm. we find out, Malcolm McDowell's daughter. Yes. The principal's daughter, uh, and she becomes friends with Cody. Yeah. Her and the uh, leader of the Razorhead guys as well. Because he was one of the ones who he was. Uh, oh, we're introduced to him. You mean? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. We're, we're introduced to him more than just like you're in our territory. Right, we're right, gonna. Right. Yeah. Uh, he's like not super important. No. But he does have. He like, does have a role at the end of the yeah. movie, right, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant that he was also the son of Malcolm McDonald. No, that like, would I be interesting. That entire, yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, but then after the Pam Greer class, we go to the history class with the old guy who has a pipe the whole time, (laughs) and this shit is hilarious. These kids start uh, acting up and, like, fighting each other, and he he does his little assessment thing and picks corporal punishment, Punishment. and then it is the funniest fucking scene. He power spanks these kids. (laughs) He grabs them, puts it over his lap, and goes, wham, 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 wham. And dude, creepy mullet, uh, ice mullet guy is so clearly, this is clearly his fetish. Yeah. He is sitting there watching, like, oh yeah. Dude, more to it slower. Yeah. <laughs> Get corporally punish them harder. <laughs> dude is getting off. It is amazing. Uh, and put out your put out your pipe on him. Yeah. Corporal punishment, is that still legal, sir? It was necessary to keep the children alive. Oh my God, he is! Uh, oh, but the, when he when he grabbed him, I knew what he was gonna spank him. But then when they make him Robo spank them, and it's like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I, was, I <laughs> lost it, dude. I could not. I was not Ugh. prepared. Uh, so now the, the teachers are getting everybody to fall in line. The new Terminator teachers. Uh, Cody goes home. We find out his family are all addicts. Like his yep. mom is an addict. We see her briefly. Mm-hmm. Um, so is uh, Angel and uh, the other one. Yeah, because they, they, yeah. they just steal Sunny. from their mom's supply. Yeah, they steal their mom's drugs, and then they're fighting over them and stuff. And Cody's like, fuck you guys. Fuck all of you. I don't want to be around this anymore. Uh, then we cut to the next day. Uh, Christy, Christine, or Christy, whatever her name is, uh, gets, like, uh, uh, molested by some gang yeah, members. They, the, man, it's yep. like, out in the, out in the open. <laughs> just out, yeah. Uh, but luckily, uh, uh, Cody, Cody is, is there. there. To, yeah, runs in to runs save in the day. Beats the shit out of this and guy. And then, of course, uh, because it's this kind of film, he's the one who gets in trouble with the, yeah. uh, the teacher. But I will say, and I really thought this was an interesting layer to the movie, is they don't make Malcolm McDowell like evil. He's no. like, he doesn't, he he kind of gets suckered into this program, mm-hmm. but it seems like he clearly, because he's like, when he finds out what happened, he, he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's I've, That boy ended up in the hospital. That boy nearly raped your daughter. You know. Effectively, he just feels like he's in a position where he has no other option. Yes, than and then this. we'll find out some other uh, elements to tie into it in, in yeah. a little bit here. But yeah, yeah, he's he, definitely given. He's he's sold a false bill of goods. Yes, from basically, the, uh, from he's Doctor kind Wars. of a, a sucker in all of this. He's not actually like evil or anything like that. He does. He is trying to do what he thinks is best or whatever um, to actually help the situation. <laughs> it turns out he hired a bunch of Terminators <laughs> to work at a school. Um, anyway, so then. Uh, <laughs> I love that the, uh, then, oh, then we go to gym class. Yes. And this is where we're introduced to Bryles, who is the gym teacher Terminator robot. And he's making some kid do like 800 push ups or whatever. Oh my God. And then as they're all leaving, uh, and this is the guy who broke up the fight with Cody mm. earlier. And Cody, like, gave him, was like complaining about him to the principal. He was like, he almost broke my arm. And like, what the, what was that about? I was just defending your daughter. This bitch nearly broke my arm. 
and so now the robot hates him, <laughs> yes. apparently. Yes. And is like, we got to wrestle. <laughs> he, he makes him stay behind yeah. after he has everybody else head to the locker room. Yeah. And he just starts beating the ever-living shit out of Cody. Beating the shit out of him. And then one of Cody's friends, I guess. Comes in with a knife, right? He gets real high. No, a gun. He gun, gets gun. real high in the locker room and yeah. then comes in with a gun and is like, uh, get off of him. I'm, right. I, I think then, the knife is later. Yeah, there's a different scene with the knife, but he has a gun, and he comes in, and and since he has a gun, the robot just fucking murders Mur- him. Yes, just breaks his neck. Picks him up and snaps his neck right in front of Cody, and Cody's like, what the fuck? Get away from me. Uh, and uh, a whole while, Ice Mullet Dude is watching from the, the basement of the thing, just like, yes, yes kill the kids, <laughs> yes. And all the other scientists are like, this seems fucked up. And he's like, no, it's going perfectly. So do you think that maybe we are the bad guys? <laughs> yeah, right? He's like, no, we like murdering children, yes. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, we get Ooh. another uh, the scene after that. We're now then in history class, and Cody's older brother Sonny, comes stumbling yeah. in like high, uh, and he was also he got beat up by somebody. I think the Blackhearts or something, maybe mm. or no, he is a Blackheart. He got beat up by the Razorheads or something like that. Uh, but he comes stumbling into class high and and starts shit talking the teacher, and the teacher takes him to the principal's office, but then stops at his locker. locker. And forces him to, like, OD. Yes. I love the opening of the scene, though. He s- punches his hand through the locker and then pulls it open like a night. It's uh, awesome. Uh, but then, yeah, he grabs uh, all the drugs in his locker and just shoves them all in his mouth and makes him overdose and then, like, knocks his head into the fucking locker and leaves him there to die. So, good. so now they've killed <laughs> several kids already, like, within the first two days of being at this school. Uh, and one of them literally just murder. <laughs> like, the second one, the first one, the guy kid had a gun and was pointing at him, but st- yeah. and there was other, it was other, it was a complicated situation. But this one, literally, he just murders this kid yeah, <laughs> like yeah. he actively murders this kid who was a high on drugs um but then so th- at this point uh, uh, uh Malcolm and Dahl's like a little weary about this but then he goes to dinner with Ice Mullet and Ice Mullet's like hey uh, if you back out now I'll he basically blackmails yeah. him he's like if you back out now I'll be able to I'll tell him that you were involved and the blood's on both our hands basically mm. blah 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 we got to keep going I can tell you one thing that is, of this afternoon, you participated in a cover-up of the drug addict boy's death. <laughs> you you sanctioned this. Yeah. These this was under your control. So yeah. these two two children's <laughs> lives are on your hands. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so Malcolm McDowell kind of gets uh, blackmailed into continuing the program. Uh, and I, I love we cut, and it's like the next day, and after all this violence, there's this, it's so funny, and again, we're in this gang infested mm. school. There's just a <laughs> shot of Cody walking across like the, the, the quad, like where they're eating lunch, and he's holding a juice box, and it just looks so silly because he's dressed in like Mad Max clothing, yeah. and everybody there is dressed like they're in the apocalypse, but he's got a little juice box. <laughs> it's like the contrast of those two things. Look, is so I may be good. a hardened criminal, but I still need my vitamin C. I still need my juice box. I need my juicy. Oh, it's incredible. Um, also, he just got the shit beaten out of him by uh, a different gang the night before, or by his gang. Because mm-hmm. he, uh, yeah, because he now. like wanted to leave them, and they're like, "You don't leave the yeah. gang." Yeah, and so they kicked his ass, but he seems mostly fine. He's got like one like bright. Well, he also bruise. got his ass beaten by the gym teacher. And yeah, just like all right, you're, just go to the infirmary for five minutes. Yeah, you're fine. fine. I guess they have super future d- drugs or something. They, what, they do- top him in a back to tank for a second. <laughs> yeah, uh, but then they uh, he so he's talking to uh, Christine. He's like, hey, Christy, listen, your dad's lying. Maybe he doesn't know what's going on, but you can convince him. I think that the new teachers are murdering students. Uh, I need to go get evidence because she's like, well, I, I don't remember. My dad's not going to believe you. Nobody's going to believe you. And he's like, we need to go get evidence. I can prove it because the the history teacher has, I saw him. He had my brother's crucifix, it had like a cross that he was wearing. Mm. Uh, it was covered in blood after he killed him. And he goes, we need to go to their home and break in. Yeah. <laughs> and so she steals the the book, like the faculty directory. Why do they have this? And why are these teachers on it? I don't it? know. But they all they all like, have the same address. Yeah. She's like, wow, they all live at the same. Oh, they're in a thruple. Sick. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and so, But they get to this. Uh, they get to their condo and they open it and it's like empty. There's like a couple chairs and like yeah. big tanks of 
chemicals. I, w- I would have liked for them to go like full in Futurama robot where they're like, well, you know, this space is like three cubic meters and we only take up 1.8 <laughs> cubic meters. We got room for another two thirds of a person. And we only take up 1.5 cubic meters. We've got room for a whole nother two thirds of a person. <laughs> yeah. And they, it's incredible. And my, my favorite moment is he opens one of the cabinets and it's just, it's just perfectly lined WD-40. Yes. yes. <laughs> I was laughing my ass over there. It's so good. He oh always, it's just like 80 bottles of WD-40. WD-40. And then like the one before squeaky some hinges. sort of like grease, degreaser or something. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. They open, was, they open the fridge and there's like the green goo. That yeah, like, it's like big it. metal canisters of stuff or whatever. So it's good. incredible. And they go in and they find the woman's room and she has like one basket on the floor with one bra in it. And Christine's mm. like, this is weird. I don't know what's going on. Oh my god! Uh, but he does eventually find the the, the bloody crucifix that his mm. brother has. He's like, I have proof now. But right as that happens, they show up. Uh, a chase and, ensues. Yes, they arrive back home. A chase ensues. They get on their motorcycle. He lets her get off, and she runs away. And then he's getting chased by them. And he's a good on a motorcycle. They're literally pit maneuvering him on a motorcycle, and he is not going down. <laughs> I was like, that was impressive. But he eventually drives them to like a pier or something, or a, a highway that just ends and in the ocean. Yeah, I don't and they just drive straight off. Yeah. Uh, they, they do tip him over, but they just keep going and drive into the ocean. <laughs> There's a great line. One of them's like, I hate water. <laughs> it's pretty good. I hate water. I stay for a dive. Um, but anyway, so he thinks maybe they're dead. He doesn't know for sure, but he's like, I got to get out of here. Um, but uh, we, we'll find out they're obviously alive because they're indestructible. They're robots. Basically indestructible robots. And I love that we have a like, cut to a scene of them just like walking out of the bay, <laughs> yes. just like climb, walking up the banks. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, but then there's, again, this movie is really good. There's a great little scene that I thought worked really well where he comes back and his little brother's there and he gives him his birthday present. He like buys him some comics and they have mm. like a very like kind of um, – They've had a uh, some conflict in their relationship because of the, again all of the, like the, this little kid is trying to like wants to follow in their footsteps and he just got joined the gang that mm-hmm. Cody just got out of so there's like these kind of like tensions there, um, but they still really care about each other and they have this really sweet scene where they like go and play basketball together and I was like this is actually really nice this is like a really good <laughs> character work and like really good little moments for your characters, uh, but as soon as I saw them playing basketball and have like, this moment I was like that kid's fucking yeah. dead. <laughs> Not quite, but close. He's about to be, yeah. <laughs> He's about to be. Um, because then later that night, the basically the robots decide that the the the, the course of action is to just kill everybody. Yeah. Well, why 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 a why should we be spending our time trying yeah. to discipline these children when we can just easily kill them? Yeah. You said yourself, it's only about a th- two thirds of the student population's <laughs> gang members. Yeah. If we get rid of them, 100% won't be. Yeah, there you go. It's a brilliant, brilliant plan. But I love that their big plan, actually, is clever, is they, they, they're they going to... Uh, start a gang war. Start a gang war by basically killing one member from each gang and then blaming it on the other gang mm. so that they'll fight each other. And so they get Angel. And <laughs> it's a sad scene because this is a nice... I like this character. But they like he's trying to run away from him and they like capture him. And then the, the gym teacher just picks him up and chucks Let's him against the side of a God. barn. His body just flies in the oh. air and bounces off the... <laughs> I don't think they had a stunt person for this either. I think this was this kid. I think it's a dummy, but maybe not. Maybe Maybe. it is just... If that's... No, there's no way. He he throws him against the bar and he falls like 10 feet. Yeah, that that definitely. (laughs) But like some of the other stuff, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it's so good. But so they kill him, uh, and then the 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 Blackhearts, which is Cody's old gang, find him the next day, uh, and he has like his basketball says like we're starting a war or whatever. Yeah, like, fuck you guys. Uh, and then the other gang. See now, what, what? they should have done. What they should have done was like wrap razor wire around him. Yeah, that would have been the like, razor heads. Yeah, right. Yeah, maybe they did. I don't know. His neck was really like messed up when they <laughs> showed his body. I don't know. We didn't really see it. I did. Well, he was on a noose, I think, maybe. Mm. I don't know. Anyway, so they kill him, and then uh, they also kill one of the other random guys, the guy the, delivering the, pizza, yeah, or the, the guy other, was picking a pizza one. or something. Mm. They kill that guy and then blame that on the black heart. So now they, they want to meet and have a big shootout. Yep, and they, they do like, we're going to, and this, you know what this reminded me of? Uh, Deadbeat at Dawn. 
Oh, where they yeah. had the gang war. Yeah, they had the gang war, and everybody's like, "All right, we're getting ready." And everybody's like getting their weapons yeah. and stuff, getting getting all ready for battle. And then they like both drive to the same junkyard and take yes. opposite ends, like they're playing <laughs> paintball or something, <laughs> and then just start shooting at each other. It's incredible. <laughs> I love that they drive there like right next to each other and then just go to opposite ends of the field and start murdering each other. Um, and then uh, I then the teachers show up and just start sneaking around killing everybody like and nobody notices. Yeah. I don't know how nobody notices because later on there's a scene where Cody's like, we just kicked the shit out of the razor heads and Harden was there. I saw him. I shot him. He didn't even go down. The teachers were there. They killed. I saw the whatever the history teacher's name is. I saw him there. He killed some one of the guys. And they're like, "What?" The teachers were there. I was like, "He was the only person out of all of you." There were just like three yeah. teachers everywhere. Walking they, they weren't being that. No, stealthy. they really were not. They were just walking around murdering people. But apparently, Cody's the only one who saw these teachers there. Uh, but there's a great moment. Uh, the the history teacher. Um, they're they're in a big shootout. A bunch of stuff happens, but whatever. It boils down there. Uh, Cody is in a shootout with like the head leader of the other gang. It's like him and his second in command versus the head of the Razor Fist and his second in this like warehouse. And they're shooting at each other. And then they're like hiding behind a wall. And Cody's second in command, dude, hands explode through the wall, grab him and pull, and pull him, him through and snap him uh, backwards through yep. the wall. Yep. It's amazing. It's so good. And then Cody looks through the hole and his body's laying in two pieces and the history teacher's just standing there. Hi, how you bike. doing? <laughs> it's great. It's so good. I love it so much. Oh, my God. Um, but then finally, now that I don't remember if they sh tell him something or but Malcolm McDowell's like, all right, he gets evidence was, or something. This is definitely a point where I was like, wait, how is there 20 minutes left of this movie? There's like a 30 minutes left at this yeah. point, yeah. Um, but he, because you, it does feel like it's mostly over. But the gangs, uh, they, they end up kind of just like nothing really happens. They kind of just go home having killed a bunch of each other <laughs> without, but like not really resolving anything. Okay, we did some killing. Guess we'll leave now. We're, I gotta go home now. <laughs> yeah. I got school in I the got morning. School in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but Malcolm McDowell is like, we're ending the program. He he brings in uh, Ice Mullet and one of I think the other teachers are mm. there, and he's like, we're ending the program. That you guys are out of control. And Malcolm McDowell's like, or er, fucking what Ice Mullet. What do like, you think was gonna happen yeah, here? Fuck you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I love uh, the guy grabs him by the neck and and squeezes his fingers through Malcolm McDowell's neck, and then when he drops him on the ground, he's got holes like <laughs> finger holes. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, kills Malcolm McDowell though, uh, and they're continuing their program so that he can sell these robots to the. I love that this the idea that this is like a proof of of like uh, approving that these robots work or whatever so that he can sell them to, to the, the military. military. Yeah. Battle droids, Myers. Battle droids. Military surplus marked to be shipped to Central America for the 10 year war. This seems like the worst possible way to do this. All right. Uh, Look, they can murder little unarmed yeah, kids. Yes. Amazing. All right, doctor. And your evidence for these being good militaristic <laughs> robots is they killed children. Yeah, they've killed a lot of children. Oh, no, that tracks. All right, let's, moving on. That's perfect. Oh, my God. He killed 23 babies. Well, yeah, but it was in self-defense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then I don't remember who this conversation takes place between, but I had to mention it because the line was very funny to me. And I was like, what is it about this line in movies that we do? But somebody asks somebody, I think somebody asks Cody if he trusts like one of the other gang members or something like that. Oh, oh, that's what it is. It's because they get calls mm. and it, Pam Greer using the voice of the, the two opposing oh, gang yeah, members. Yeah. Calls the two leading gang members and like we're gonna we're gonna settle things at the school. We're one v one me at the school, <laughs> nerd. Yeah, <laughs> and so they're gonna one v one in front of the school in the morning. Uh, but she's basically that she tricked both of them into into agreeing mm -hmm. to it. Neither one actually did it. Um, but they one of them is talking to like his second in command guy after getting off the phone with them, and it goes, "You trust him? Yeah, like a vampire giving me a blowjob." And his second man cousin is like, you trust him? And he goes, yeah, like a vampire giving me a blowjob. And I was like, what is it with these movies and vampire blowjobs? <sighs> Fucking one of our earliest episodes, one of the yep. best lines in yep. the history of this show. Forget Darius from, Darius from uh, Family <laughs> uh, Matters. Yes, from uh, Vampires Los Muertos. Yep. You ain't lived till you got hit from a vampire. vampire. Boss. 
<laughs> you ain't lived till you got a head from a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> great. It's great. It's so good. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Um, then, uh, yeah, so we, again, like I said, we find out Pam Greer kind of staged all of this. And then uh, also we get one brief shot showing that literally all of the scientists who were helping have been murdered oh, yeah, by they're the just robots. Dead. That or they had a hell of a raging party the night before, but they're all fucking laying all, all over their councils, uh, not engaged anymore. And then um, there's a really sick moment where they go, they show up for the 1v1, and I love this shot. They show up by themselves, and then uh, the Razor Fist guy, all of his people show up, and it's like, oh, shit, you lied. You brought all your people. And then Cody's standing there, and he's backlit, and then all the black hearts roll up <laughs> behind him, and it's so badass, the way it's lit, the way it's sh- composed. Oh, I love it so much. Never um, show up to a duel alone. <laughs> yes. And then uh, basically... They get there and Cody has realized this is all a big trick. He's like, mm. no, nah, this is this is all bullshit. It's the teachers. You see, someone's running a game on us. The same game that killed my brother. The same game that killed Noser. And he basically fucking he gives a, a rousing speech and unites both of the gangs against the <laughs> teachers. And they're You're right. I mean, sure, maybe we had been firing upon each other and we've killed each other's gang members with insane murderous <laughs> intent. And, uh, you know, I couldn't possibly forgive you for that. But that rousing speech has turned Well, they heart. realize who the real villain is, Kyle, and it's these fucking teachers, and they gotta fucking murder them. So they drive oh. their motorcycles. I love this. They blow up, like, the metal detector, which every day they walk, go through, they go through the metal detector, they blow it up, and it catches fire, and they ride their motorcycles through it, and it's so fucking metal, Kyle. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool. Oh, my God. Uh, and then they're riding their motorcycles all around school uh, looking for the teachers or whatever, <laughs> and I love... Uh, so the first one, they find Pam Greer, and the end, this end of this movie is amazing the uh, special effects department it's nuts went fucking hog wild for the end of this movie uh, <laughs> I, I had to censor uh this part with pam Greer at one yes, point because yes. we get we get latex boob yes she she like at some point i don't know if she gets shot and then she's like look you can't kill me and she like rips her chest it, open all the green goo shit comes yeah, out revealing oh. all the mechanisms underneath but yeah there's like a little bit of nipple hiding off to the <laughs> side there that you can kind of that is clearly like a prosthetic uh chest or whatever um, but she walks around with her just her guts hanging out the rest of the movie. Uh, but she has a flamethrower hand. Yes. And this, the moments where <laughs> the, they fucking rip their hands off and reveal these weapons is so fucking cool every time, Kyle. They're all different and they're all amazing. Her hand fucking that is melts. The, the quote to this film. It's goofy. But so fucking cool. It's so fucking cool. <laughs> she starts like freaking out, and then her hand starts melting, and it melts away like 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 kind of looks like like uh, raiders. Uh, yeah, raiders yeah. or something like that. Melts away, revealing this flamethrower, and she starts flamethrowing everybody. And I was like, this is amazing. I have no notes. Movie continue. <laughs> this is so good. Then the Bryles guy, the gym teacher, they run into him. Uh, and he he rips he literally just rips his arm off. He mm. grabs it, rips it off, and he has a fucking rocket launcher on his arm. <laughs> He's shooting rockets at people. God. It's so good. I love it. And one of the kids is driving around trying to get away, and he drives over by a window, and then the gym teacher shoots him with a rocket. <laughs> Launched. Blown out of a window. Oh my god! It's so amazing. The, everything in this last like twenty plus minutes or so yes. is just absolute chaos. And the best, and it's <laughs> the best. You could tell they were all having so much fun. It's so insane. Then he, we get down, and Cody is is facing off with the the history teacher guy because mm. he finally finds Christine. She had been ca- oh that was the other thing. Christine got kidnapped by the teacher. She needed a reason to be there. Yeah, so she was like in a jail cell in the basement or whatever. So Cody finds her, uh, but he gets he gets confronted by the. Uh, the history teacher guy and his the way they reveal his arm weapon he's holding his arm up and spikes shoot out the side and then launch up and it launches his hand off and he has a giant fucking evil claw game hand (laughs) thing it's incredible dude i was i was losing it i loved everything about the end of this movie um but he has this giant claw hand and he just he like smashes one of the guys' heads. He like claws one dude to death. But oh, Cody, yeah. yeah, like one of the other guys who's there. But Cody is able to like get away just enough to grab a gun. <laughs> 
and shoots him in the mouth and drops apparently, the banger one liner. And apparently that's like the the of, of all things that are like their 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 ultimate weakness. Bullets just yes. in the right spot. Just in the right spot. They shoot him a million times and it never does anything. But apparently, if you shoot him in the mouth, that works. But he shoots him in the mouth and he goes, Wait to surrender! Your history, Mr. Oh! Your history. Uh. <laughs> I was like, Yes, I can't wait for more school based fucking one liners, uh, more educational one liners. Uh, and we get more. Oh my God, do we get more? Uh, the, once again, like everything from this on, it, the, the director and the writer and all the people producing this are like, Screw it. We are going full in right full now. Full in. It's insane. Everything that it's so nuts. So then they got to k- take care of Pam Greer. Mm. So they lure her into the chemistry class <laughs> and they turn on <laughs> all, all the, the Bunsen, all the Bunsen burners. And then they're hiding and she's like walking around looking for him. And then uh, uh, Cody has a fire axe and he chucks it at her and it hits her. <laughs> hits her in the like, she has like these like flammable, like containers yeah, in her chest or yeah. something uh, and it starts spraying gas and then she goes to shoot her flamethrower and genius just, genius move everything and boom explodes. a huge explosion it's and uh, we get another one liner guess i blew that course guess i blew that course <laughs> uh, yes uh, yes <laughs> I was trying to predict what I thought the last one-liner for the last teacher would be, and I really thought it was going to be schools out for summer. It is not, but I thought of that, that would be, be nice. I thought that was going to be what it was. Um, but then, so they get to the last guy, and it's Bryles, and he's at, they're outside at this point. Yeah, and he's like firing rockets. He's at shooting them. rockets at him, and so he has the other, the head of the razor fist. He's like distract him, and the guy's like running around. Distract somebody with a rocket yeah, launcher? Exactly. He's like running around shooting at him, dodging rockets. I've played Goldeneye. I know how this goes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cody hot wires the school, the school bus, bus, which is armored. Yes. <laughs> And fucking runs him over with the school Through the bus. front door of the school. And it fucking explodes. Why Why does the school bus explode? I have no idea. Who knows? It does it matter? Explodes. No. Uh, and the gangs are friends now. They come out and they're like, we Yay. did it. Yes, amazing. Um, but... They they realize uh, I don't they go back inside for something. It's because they the, they knew Forrest was there or something. Oh, Doctor Forrest. Yeah. yeah, they hear something or yeah. they. Let's go check out our homeboys. See if anybody's left. So they go back inside. Meanwhile, we see from under the wreckage Riles of the bus is not dead. And it, there's some great mechan- like animatronic, yes. creepy ass like. And it also goes like full RoboCop skeleton yes. here. Yes, absolutely. Or, I guess or Terminator. Terminator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a full. He is. He is this like half melted, gnarly, half skin metal. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. He looks so Ugh. creepy and incredible. Um, and then so they go and they find uh, Dr. Forrest, who's like down in the lab or whatever, doing something. I don't know. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, but I also love uh, we get this shot of 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 Bryles walking down the hallway to come after them. And it's a stop motion composited in stop motion little Terminator yeah. robot going. <laughs> ring, ring, ring. <laughs> so good. Then um, they. uh Basically, he's fighting Dr. Forrest. Cody's fighting Dr. Forrest, and mm. Dr. Forrest has the upper hand, but right as he's about to kill him, Bryle shows up, and I guess he's just haywire. I don't know yeah. why. His programming's all messed His up. His program is all messed up. He just literally punches a hole in the doctor's <laughs> chest and kills him. <laughs> Oh, and their um, way of their way of finally killing Bryles is great because yes, of, of, of all the weird shit to have at a school, a forklift, a forklift, a forklift. Also, did you notice he nearly impales Christine? Yes, with a fucking yes. Forklift? She is oh climbing, my God. trying to get away from the robot, and she's like on a ladder, and Cody gets on a fucking forklift and starts <laughs> dry, and and the the robot is climbing after her, and he's he's like, look out, I'm coming in, and he's. Impales it with the forklift, but that thing misses her yeah. by inches, dude. He almost director at the end. Cut. Uh, can we can we reset? No, no, no. Okay, and we'll fucking literally we'll almost killed our actor. <laughs> I, I don't know if that that shot was scary. I don't know how they pulled that off, or if that was just a very happy accident. Because oh boy. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, but I love it. So then she's like on the front of it with him. And then he's like, grab this chain, and she grabs a chain and wraps it around his yes. neck. And then he starts driving in circles to tighten it, and then lowers <laughs> the fucking forklift. And it just it separates him in half. Rips his head off, and there's oh. goo and, and fucking tendons and shit everywhere. It's so good. It's amazing. Uh, and this is where we get the final one-liner. Have a nice stretch, coach. Have a nice stretch, coach. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Well, then that one was Nailed it. Worst. <laughs> uh, and then they walk out of the school, and the entire yep. school is just burning down around so, them. Uh, school's out, right? <laughs> For the summer, baby. As school's burning down around them, and we get an incredible uh, music number comes in and plays us yes. out to the credits. God, it's insane. It's insane. It starts to fall. Come today. I will be there with my it's so good. Kyle, I looked up. This movie has a, there's a reason this movie has a 63% on Rotten Tomatoes. Also, this is not a bad movie. <laughs> So I have something to say with the credits. Okay. I don't know sure, sure if you look through the songs or if you recognize one of the songs. I believe it's when the gangs were having their gang war. And this is how old this film is. The Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. It, it literally just has the, the, nine, nine, inch the nails. nine Inch Nails written uh, written by uh, Trent, Trent Reznor. Reznor. <laughs> Trent that's Reznor, amazing. Yeah. And that's in the credits. I was like, what the? What is this I, one doing in here? so good. What is it, man? Uh, the music is great in this, so that doesn't surprise me. But yeah, it's... Dude, okay, this movie is not good, bad. It is great. It's it's, it's great, good. bad. It's great. Bad. I mean, sure, it's good, bad. We'll put it's it's good, bad in regard to what our yes metrics are. Yes, but like it hits all of our like awesome things that we're yeah. looking for. But then it just like yeah. succeeds past. But it's that. also just a really well made mm. movie. Like this has none of the stuff that we would normally sh talk about. Like there's not like terrible. There's a little bit ADR occasionally a little rough here and there, but not like terrible. Um, but the effects are all amazing. It's shot really well. It looks gorgeous. Like it's 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 yeah. like all the night it, shots look cool and moody and actiony and like intense. Like, it's it's well executed. Acting performances is, are all great. great. Yeah. The only thing that you can really hit it for is some of the writing stuff and yeah. logistics with yeah. it, where it's like, why are they at the Really, they the school? biggest thing is that the premise is goofy as shit, <laughs> but it's as good as a movie with this premise could possibly be. Yes. <laughs> it's like how I would how I would kind of boil it down. A premise where a bunch of Terminators are teaching at a post-apocalyptic gang war zone high school. Yeah, the, the, you, you, you want to say that again? <laughs> no, I already forgot what I said. You can't make that movie better than this, no. I don't think. Uh, I just love it so much. Absolutely good, bad. It's fucking great. I literally wrote down in my last notes, is I legitimately think this is the best movie we've ever watched on this show, in my opinion. I am a huge fan of this it's right movie. right up there I, with uh, Good Cop, Bad Cop. <laughs> It's way better than that. That movie was good. It had its moments and stuff. Mm. This one, I legitimately, I am not, I'm not, there's not a, a little bit of, I legitimately think this is just like an incredibly good movie. Like a, like a very high tier, like action-y, yeah, like is, schlocky if, movie. If, if, uh, comparison to a, almost a very similar one, this is far superior to uh, Demolition High with Corey Haim. Oh, yes. Oh, way better. And mm. that one was fun in its own way, but that one was way worse and not nearly as uh, compelling as this movie is. Because I think it's the other thing is this movie actually has heart to it. That's kind of, it's, and again, it's a little thin here and there, but like the main character's kind of journey and trying to like find a, his path in life and like the fallout with his siblings. Again, it's not, it's all kind of thin, but it, there's at least a little bit of like emotion yeah, there, and thought put into it. It's thin, but there's foundation yeah, to it. Yeah, there's, like, yes. there, there's definitely like, as long as there's a bottom to something where you have a, a common ground yeah. that anybody can just watch it and understand. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely. Works. And it, it's, it, yeah. And, and, and mechanically it's, it's just everything about the movie is very well done. It's just great. It's a great movie. Go watch fucking, <laughs> class of 1999 it's, it's on tubi right for, it is. for now yes it's on tubi that's gonna do it for this episode as always head over to patreon.com slash this film is support us there for a few bucks a month get access to bonus content and stuff like that and you'll just be supporting us which is really nice you can also support us by heading over to t public uh, all of these links are in the description buy some merch we would appreciate that i have a podcast called this film is it we're talking about movies that are based on books when this episode's out the most recent episode will have been uh, i'm thinking of ending things 
It's a Netflix movie that came out in 2022. Yes. Jesse Plemons is, and Jesse Buckley are the two leads. It's okay. a Charlie Kaufman film. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so that'll be oh. the most recent episode, uh, I believe, when you're watching this. Uh, and then after that, we're getting into our summer series, which is uh, Divergent. The Divergent series. Great. So you, <laughs> yep. You, you go from like futuristic incredibly dystopia. heady like, like uh, yeah well you, yeah you go for real cinema and, and not only that this the ex- insane nihilism that is charlie Kaufman yes. to like a futuristic dystopia <laughs> ya yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be great it's gonna be amazing can't oh. wait uh but that's what's coming up on this film is lit uh you can also check us out twitch occasionally just uh, links for that are also down there and that's gonna do it for this episode Good, bad, or bad, bad. Until next time, keep watching movies. Especially. Dude, I cannot. Especially the class of 1999. So good. It's so good. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not, look at me. I'm not joking. It's really fucking good. I don't think you believe me, Kyle. (laughs) Good. Good.